while growing up. The first vehicle we all probably learned to ride is a bicycle. Well, depending on your country or local culture, you probably call it a bike, or simply a cycle. However, it's fun to ride a bicycle, no fuel or engine, just paddle and ride many miles you like. When you pedal, crank wheel makes the rear will rotate via chain drive. But did you ever notice, when you try pedaling in reverse, the rear wheel does not rotate in reverse direction? Or when you stop pedaling on downhill road, the rear wheel automatically becomes free from the chain drive. It's pretty cool. Right, isn't it? Here, an one-way clutch unit makes it possible. It's a screw joint between rear wheel hub and the sprocket. The sprocket has one inner race or sometimes called cone, and one outer race, known as cup. Ball bearing set maintains low friction between these two parts. The inner race of the wheel sprocket stays fixed with the wheel hub. So, it always rotates as a single unit. But, the main teeth are located on the outer race. When you pedal forward and rotate the big crank wheel, the crank wheel pulls the chain. At the other end, chain motion makes the wheel sprocket's outer piece rotate clockwise. As wheel hub directly linked with inner race, here, outer piece need to transfer motion to the inner piece. Then wheel will rotate, and bicycle will go forward. But a simple bearing mechanism does not allow the power transfer from one race to another. That's why a bearing is used at the first place, to reduce rolling friction between two machine parts. Well, this wheel sprocket is not a simple bearing, it's a one-way clutch bearing. The secret lies inside the sprocket. At inner side, a ratchet teeth ring is fixed with the outer race, and the inner race is fitted with pawls. Pawls are spring-loaded. It can be a coil spring or spring plate. If you push the pawls towards inner race, spring force push it outward. Spring force maintains constant pressure on the pawl pieces and pawls stay in contact with the ratchet teeth. When you applying pedal pressure on the crank wheel, the chain pulls the outer race of the wheel sprocket. As soon as ratchet teeth of the outer race tries to rotate clockwise, pawls get locked into notch sections of the teeth. Now, outer race forcing the inner race to rotate along with it. Thus, pedal force is transferred to the wheel hub through these tiny pawls. As a result, wheel, rotates and your bike starts moving forward. If you try pedaling in opposite direction, that means, when the wheel sprocket is rotated in the opposite direction, a wheel is in contact with the ground, or already with forward motion, will simply resist reverse rotation. Because of that, ratchet teeth surface will try to slip against Paul's surface, to rotate backward. Paul's will be pushed inward due to cam action. And simultaneously, spring keeps pushing the pawls outward, this repetitive hitting action generates a particular sound. You can hear it, when you pedal in reverse direction. In this situation, inner race does not receive braking force to stop, so the wheel keeps spinning forward. Also, while riding downhill, your bike catches good speed and inertia. If you slow down your pedaling, or wheel speed exceeds sprocket speed, then the inner race rotates faster than outer race. This develops same relative situation where pawls slip on the teeth surface. So, this is one way free, and opposite way locked, while servicing make sure you fit the right wheel sprocket right way, otherwise your bike will go crazy. If you like this video, then give it a big like, and don't forget to subscribe our channel, and enjoy your ride.